Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel. Mr. Covert, I'm sorry I didn't feature this watch earlier. This is the first time I've actually had the watch in my possession, however, and I want to make up for some lost time. Today we're discussing your Eberhard Traversatolo chronograph. The Traversatolo line was launched in 1992 and it helped to mark a return to mechanical watchmaking. Eberhard, the name behind the watch, was founded in 1887 by Georges Eberhard, but in 1969, under Italian ownership by Palmero Monti, the company began to turn towards what would ultimately be a fruitful trade in quartz watches during the 1970s and 80s, and it was with this model line that the company really announced its return in earnest to traditional chronograph design, of which it had a great heritage, and mechanical watchmaking. Now, you can see the watch on my wrist is in historic Eberhard fashion, just a bit larger than the norm for its period. Back then, watches in 36, 37, 38 millimeters were considered oversized during the golden era of the chronograph in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Today, this watch, 43 millimeters in stainless steel, is just a little larger than the norm, and that for functional purposes. 15 millimeters thick, it does have a nicely rounded bezel, so it does fit fairly easily underneath a tighter cuff, perhaps a looser sweater, or a formal cuff along the lines of a blazer or sport jacket. Now, the watch is a modern 50.5 millimeters from lug to lug, but not ridiculously oversized. You can see, even on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it wears well. Well, now in the modern era, Eberhard is one of the few watch brands actually run by a husband and wife tandem, just like Peter and Aletta Stas at Alpina, Atelier de Monaco, and of course Frédéric Constant, and Oliver and Eba Epstein at Krona Swiss since 2012, and even Richard and Maria Hopring in Hopring. The company Eberhard today is actually run by the daughter of Palmero Monti, her name's Barbara, and her husband. And Mario Persevico is actually the GM who is behind a lot of the modern product planning. So he's sort of the brains behind the look of this watch. Now the timepiece features a lacquered style dial, all of gloss, with applied and luminescent Arabic and radially arrayed numerals. You can see the watch has what's called a panda arrangement with a light dial and black sub-registers. The hands at center are foy style or leaf shaped, and you can see that the leaf shape is actually emulated on all of the sub-register hands. The watch is abundantly visible in the dark, and that's in keeping with its sports watch heritage. Now you can see that outboard of the hour track, there's actually a tachymetric scale that can be used for timing high speed race cars, aircraft, power boats around a course. It's used precisely for that purpose. And it's simply a matter of starting when the object in question passes a milestone marker and then stopping when the unit, whether it's a kilometer, a mile, a quarter mile is complete, and then performing the calculation. Now, it's also important to note that the watch is built like a sports timepiece with a screw-down crown, which endows the watch with 5 ATM water resistance. When the crown is withdrawn after threading it out, there are a couple of subsidiary functions. You can see that when you pull the crown to extremity, you hack the balance, halting the seconds at 3 o'clock, so you can precisely synchronize to a reference time. The best way to do that is to allow the seconds hand to reach the index at 60, pull the crown, align the minute hand to the next nearest minute, and then return the crown as soon as your reference time catches up to the time you set on the dial. Now there is a quick set for the date, found in the intermediate position, outboard of flush. You turn in a clockwise direction to rapidly correct should the watch run down or encounter an irregular length of month. Now of course, there is a chronograph function, and it's enabled by what's known as a Volgrange a07.211, and if the movement looks familiar, that's simply because Valgrange and the A07 family are the larger variety of the well-known ETA Valjoux 7750s, but whereas the 7750 is just under 30 millimeters, the Valgrange version here has an extra four hours of power reserve, 46 versus the original's 42, and it has a much larger presence, spanning over 36 millimeters, it better fills the case back of a modern timepiece. In every other respect, with the exception of the extra power reserve, it looks and it functions like a Valjoux 7750, but you can see that this one has been elaborated with polished surfaces, alternately engine turned, as you can see across the bridges. There's a tight and even what's known as prolage pattern applied with engine turning. And you can also see that circular Cote de Genève have been blazoned on the custom winding rotor that is unique to the watch. Now it beats at a modern 4 hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour. 
Historically, Eberhard has a great heritage of building chronographs, having constructed its very first in the first two decades of the 20th century. Uh, later on, they released watches like the Extra Fort and the Contograph and the Contadate that innovated within the chronograph sector. Now, today they're a small manufacturer, uh, sort of sitting between the giants of Rolex BN, which makes Rolex's movements, and the headquarters of Omega and the Swatch Group in BLBN, Switzerland. The company makes less than 20,000 watches per year, of which yours is one of a very select few. You can see that this watch is a handsome representation of both Eberhard's historic competence in tool or sports style chronographs with modern aesthetics, including a high polish, immaculately finished lacquer style dial, and contemporary fit and finish. Finish. Congratulations, sir, and I'm so sorry that this review was so long in coming.